I know there were some questions on the lab involving capacitors and charges, and I wanted to go through uh, a little video with you on what the intention is of the lab and what I'm looking for in the graphs, and I think this will help you understand uh, what's going on. So I want to start by saying here, here's the basic circuit you're looking at in the lab. You're looking at a battery, which is either going to be 6 volts or 9 volts, because that's what we have. I'm going to stick with the 9 volt batteries because that's what we're going to be doing the graphs with. So it's basically a battery and a capacitor. The battery is not going to change it if we keep it at 9 volts, of course. And the capacitor is. And the way we were going to change the capacitor value is I might put in uh, a different capacitor. We have a couple of choices. We have, I think, 100 microfarads, 1,000 microfarads, and then different combinations of 100 and 1,000. Uh, maybe we'll put two hundreds in, in parallel. Maybe we'll put two thousands in, in series. Uh, I can't remember all the combinations that are stated in the lab, but there's a number of different ones. So in the end, what you're going to have effectively is this. You'll have a bunch of different circuits that all have nine volts. There are a couple six volt ones, but those won't be part of this graph. <clears throat> and they'll also be different capacitances. So... etc. There's a bunch of them. So what we're interested in is how uh, do these different capacitances uh, affect what's happening in the circuit in terms of how much charge is stored on the capacitor. That's really what we're interested in, is the charge stored, which is hard to measure, as I mentioned in class. It's not a direct measurement. It's hard to measure charge, but we can measure current. So the way we're going to do that in the circuits we have, we're basically going to have a switch that switches the circuit from being connected to the 9-volt battery to being connected to a, a meter, an ammeter, which is going to try to measure the charge. It does, the ammeter you know, does not measure charge, it measures current. That's what it's de designed to do. Ammeter stands for ampere, the am is reference to the current measurement. But what we're going to be having is our, for whatever capacitor, after it's, after the switch is thrown, this is effectively what we're going to be seeing. The capacitor and the ammeter like this. And so what's going to happen is this charge in the capacitor is going to rush through the ammeter relatively quickly. Uh, the ammeter looks like a wire to the capacitor. So it's kind of like a very low resistance resistor. So the RC time constant for this circuit is very small. That's not the focus of this lab, the RC time constant. But just know that this current is going to be a short-lived current. So the ammeter is going to spike. It's going to show a value that is uh, related to how big this current is. And basically what what this lab is, the premise behind this lab is the bigger the charge on this capacitor here, the bigger the current that's going to flow during that brief interval of time. And so the idea is the size of this current is proportional, so the symbol for proportional, to the charge on the capacitor. That's kind of the point. We're not actually measuring the charge, but we're measuring something that we think is proportional to the charge. So if you have a charge that's five times uh, on one capacitor what it is on another, then you'd expect the current to be about five times bigger when you're measuring it in this way. <clears throat> so that's the premise. Then what I'm asking you to do is to try to relate the capacitance to this charge on the capacitor which we're measuring by the size of the current. All right, now how, how can I do that in a way that makes sense? What do I think it's going to be, really? That's what I want to start with. What you're probably going to measure here, and I'm hoping you're going to measure, is that when you have a bigger capacitor, you're going to have a bigger current, therefore a bigger charge. That's what should happen. A bigger capacitor stores more charge. It's like having a, a larger cup that you're dumping. 
and you're measuring the amount of water coming out of that cup as best you can with your ammeter. The equation that tells you this is this equation, Q is equal to C times V. This relates this, the amount of charge on the capacitor to the size of the capacitor to the voltage. Now the voltage is fixed, so that's staying at 9 volts, so we don't even have to think about this voltage uh, as, as far as comparing all these circuits because the voltage doesn't change. So really what I'm at here is that Q, I can say Q is proportional to C, and since I is proportional to Q, I could say I, that you're measuring with your ammeter, is proportional to the size of the capacitor. That's what we're looking for. And so the graph that I want, I'm want i wanting you to graph is going to have capacitance on the y-axis, and this current that you're measuring as a proxy for charge on the x-axis. And what we're expecting, since since this is true, Q is proportional to C, since Q is equal to C times V, Q is proportional to C. C is also proportional to Q, That's that, that means the same thing. And C is also proportional to I, therefore. What that means is that I would expect that for a larger capacitor, I should be getting a larger current or a larger charge. And you're, you're going to be repeating this experiment for different values of capacitance, and therefore you should be seeing different currents coming through your ammeter. And when you plot the capacitance on the y-axis versus the current that you measure, the average one, you repeat it 10 times because it's not, it's a difficult measurement to get very accurate because the, the ammeter may record different values each time. It, it's kind of like a flash thing that's coming by it. So that's why I'm asking you to repeat each measurement 10 times. So once you repeat it 10 times, you'll have a given data point that is indicative of the average of those 10 measurements. And of course, you also have a standard deviation, which tells you how much variability you have in there. That kind of gives you an idea of how accurate your, your graph is. But the main thing really is to look at the average value and to see if those average values seem to line up on a line. And that line you could use to predict what the value of the capacitance is for any current that you measure in this type of circuit. Let's say you put in a completely different capacitor and you try this experiment, you measure a certain current and you don't know what the value of the capacitance is. By measuring the current, you could figure out what that value of capacitance is by looking at this line and figuring out uh, where the capacitance would lie on that line for a given value of current that you didn't have maybe when you made your original measurements. That's the idea behind this. It's it's really creating a model for what the value is of capacitance for a given current measurement in this setup. I hope this helps you, because I did get a few questions about this lab, but uh, I'm certainly happy to entertain further ones, but please, uh, well, I'd say please watch the video, but you already have if you've made it this far. Okay, see you in class.